to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. It is What Would Lou Do? Thanks so much for joining me today. I also want to give a thanks and a shout out to My Doma Studio for sponsoring the show. My Doma Studio is a complete toolkit for your interior design firm. You can organize projects from beginning to end, and you can also become part of a thriving design community. No matter where your client or team is located, you can work remotely or in person seamlessly. And as we are examining our year-end activities, there is no better time to sign up for My Doma Studio so that you can start 2022 fresh, organized, and efficient. Go to mydomastudio.com forward slash a well-designed business to get started. All right, so this is the third in a series on preparing your business for year end. We've been picking apart the areas in your business that I want to encourage you to address. Running a profitable business requires you to gather information and data and to use it to make decisions about your future. I have seen this firsthand after four decades of window works and it is bearing out again as Vin and I have taken over as managing partners of exciting windows. Interestingly, on the actual air date of the show, Vin and myself, along with our two partners at exciting windows, are currently gathered on site in a conference room in a hotel somewhere off the New Jersey Turnpike. And we are together analyzing last year, forecasting the next year and creating big plans for exciting windows in 2022. I said it on last week's What Would Lou Do? When you look back, you do so so you can look forward. And when you do it, it's not a minute. It's often a day. Like us, it's a day and a half. For other companies, it could be several days. Take the time you need. Schedule it in. What gets tracked gets done, right? And how does that other saying go? A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. Set your goals and make the plans to make them come true. All right? So, The first week, like I said, we talked about money with Peter and Michelle and Kim. And then the second week, we talked about the question that I'd like you to take some time with. Basically, am I still doing the things that light me up check in? Okay. And today we're going to do a revenue revenue generator review. Okay. Do you have various services in your business, each with a particular way that they create revenue for your business? You remember our all-around dynamite business coach, as well as my friend and co-author in volume one of the Power Talk Friday experts, Nancy Ganskalfer, right? Nancy calls it your ladder of services, okay? What I want to make sure that it's not your ladder of shiny objects, (laughs) okay? (laughs) Right? So if you are following Nancy's advice, you have honed your ladder of services to only the things that you do well, that you like doing, and that make you money when doing it. And I really hope this is, is the case, but I want you to be certain of it. And that's why we review it every year. We need to make sure we aren't doing things just because we've always done them, but rather because it continues to be smart to do them. What was a great idea two years ago might have to make room for an even better idea this year. Okay. So to illustrate this and how we go through this, I'm going to use the real life example from one of my chairman of the board clients, Kathleen Anderson. Over the last two years, Kat and I have worked together and she continues to impress me by her tenacity, her work ethic, her creativity, and mostly her kind and loving heart. In our last session, I asked her to do exactly what I'm asking you to do today. So to help get your brain in gear, here's what Kat's review looks like. 
First, I asked her to list all her revenue generators for her business. And for her, it looks like this. Number one, her full service luxury design clients. Number two, her newly introduced custom furniture line, the Eleanor, made in America by Canal Dover. Number three, her design for construction projects with her vast builder network. Number four, her online antique shop. Number five, her design kit for builders. And number six, she teaches both online bookkeeping 101 and design for construction 201 for Luann University. Okay. So these are all of the ways that Kathleen makes money in her business. All right. And then the next thing that you have to do is you have to get the actual revenue for each service of the, of the each, each of these categories for last year. Okay. This is why you need to know how to run your book so you can access this info when you need it, not sit there and say, I'm not sure how much I made in that particular service. Okay. And then what from happens from there is you're going to um, assess the cross section of the areas that produce the most income and the areas that produce the most happiness for you right? The most pride and the most pleasure. If your biggest revenue generator is not where you enjoy the most happiness, then Houston, we have a problem. That means we have to go back to the drawing board and we have to redesign your business model. But this is what this time of year is exactly for, is figuring this out, not to just keep going full steam ahead because it's what we've always done, right? If you were to do this exercise and you were to find out that the thing that you love doing the most was not a profit center for you, you have a couple of options. You can dig into it and find out why it's not producing money. Okay. Are you making mistakes? Are you not pricing it properly? Are your fees too low? Are you not doing enough markup or whatever it is? Okay. You could also find out that maybe it's, it's really isn't a legitimate money revenue, uh, money generator, right? And maybe there's a way to make it something that you do for the community as opposed to something you earn in the community. Okay. There's always room for stuff like that right? There's always room for things like that. And there's sometimes that we do things when they don't make money because they fulfill a different area of our, of our personal lives or our professional lives. And all I'm asking you to do is to know it. That's all is to know it. Okay. <laughs> so that's the point of all of that. All right. So back to Kat. It's clear that she has a fully diversified revenue stream of income, right? And as she and I talked, it was also clear that her full service luxury design clients, as well as, the, as, well as her builder clients, are the biggest revenue generators for her. Okay. So we have to keep doing those and she loves doing those. So there's, there's no dilemma there. Okay. Then we discussed her new furniture line and all that had been done to create it and all that had yet to be done to get it on its way. And I have to say, by the way, if this is the first time you're hearing about Kathleen and her furniture, please go to the eleanorcollection.com. It's E-L-E-N-O-R collection.com. This furniture is available to the trade, okay? Just contact Kat and she'll set you up. You have got to look at it. <laughs> what this woman has created from her brain is beyond comprehension to me. It is so beautiful, all right? We'll also put a link in the show notes. Now, she spent a good part of the last two years designing this collection overseeing the building process, you know, approving the strike-offs and making sure it was everything she imagined it, it could be. So this is going to get a priority from the both of us in 2022, okay? We also talked about Lu Luann University and her involvement as a faculty member. She explained how much she really loves doing this. She loves teaching creatives like you how to set up your bookkeeping so that you really do know and understand your money. And she loved, love, love sharing her many insights and lessons and strategies for the design for construction process that she earned and learned through her degrees, architecture, her certifications, her hundreds of construction projects that she has completed. And of course, it's become a relevant revenue generator for her. Okay. So as we went through all these things, at one point she said, so do I just put the antique shop and the design builder kit on the back burner? I said, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, we do not. All right. So what I want her to do and what I want you to do is list all the things down that you do to make money, the different various services like cats. Okay. 
Now, you might not have things that are outside your design business, like designing furniture and creating um, builder kits and stuff like that. But like I said, you you might have, you know, you might just do paid consults. You might do, not, not like just, I mean, in other words, just in other words, you might sell consults as a one-off, right? Some designers do that. Um, you might do paint selections as a one-off. You might do designer for a day. You might, whatever it is, there are different, think of the different ways that you make money. So it's design services, maybe it's furniture um, buying, you know, uh, packaging and selling furniture and products for your luxury clients, whatever it is, just figure out the different ways that you make money and break them down. Okay. So the thing is going back to Kat when she said, are, you know, do I just put these on the burner? I said, no, 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 no. What I want you to do is go back to all of these things. So you're going to do the same for yourself. You're going to list how much money you made on them last year. You're going to look at them and say, they love, I love doing it, or I really don't love doing it. <laughs> I'm going to figure that out. And then you're going to make the list underneath each of these things of what you would have to do to make that fully realized, right? So for the Eleanor collection, what does she have to do to make it fully realized? Does she have to consider investing in paid advertising? Does she have to consider hooking up with a colleague or an influencer? Like what are all, like brainstorm what it would take to build the Eleanor out. Then I said, brainstorm, what would it take to build, to build out the design for builder kits out? And the thing is, the truth is, it, we might come down to, for example, it might be five steps that could tactfully, not tactfully, tactily <laughs> be done in order to build out the design for builder kit. And maybe those steps can be one hour every other week for six weeks and it's done and it's off on its way. So that's, that's not a priority compared to her luxury design clients, but executing what actually has to be done for that might be something that could be done an hour a week, every other week for three months. And that's very different than not spending any time on it at all. And by doing the hour a week, every other week for three months, maybe in the second half of the year, she brings in 10 or $15,000 from that because she spent six hours in the beginning part of the year, as opposed to just saying, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy on the Eleanor, I'm busy, busy on luxury, I'm busy, busy, busy over here, and a year goes by and she doesn't do something with it. So do you see what I'm talking about here? And I want you to do this. So for example, what if you love doing designer for a day? Maybe you love doing it. And maybe you feel like, oh, it only comes up once in a while. You don't, you don't, you don't have an opportunity to do it a lot. But what if you went back and looked and saw that you did six last year and say you charged, you know, $2,800 for each one. And you know what? Say you don't really have any deliverables with it. You just tell them at the end of the day, we're done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I give you all my ideas. You write them all down. You capture them all. I'm out of here. I mean, that's valuable. That's viable. You could do that. What if you said, huh, what if I got one of those a month? One of those a month. Let's make it 3000 so I can do the math, right? That's $36,000 a year for 12 days. Maybe you're a designer that that makes a lot of sense in your revenue stream. Maybe you're a designer where you're like saying, wait a second, in those 12 days, I could, I don't know, do another bathroom project and I could make, could you make $36,000 net on a bathroom project? I don't know. Maybe you could, depends on the level you're at, right? Could you do a kitchen in 12 days? I have no idea. I'm asking you, could you do a kitchen project in 12 days and make 50K? So, I don't really know the answers to these, okay? But what I'm saying is, if it were me, I would say 12 days, what if I only charged 2,000 for designer for a day? Now it's 24,000, but in 12 days, I could make 50,000 on a kitchen. Hmm, do I take 12 days out of my life to do designer for a day or do I put them towards a kitchen? But how about this? What if I don't really love doing kitchens, but I love doing designer for a day? Hmm, now maybe instead of doing 12, I do 18. You know, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's playing around. It's like playing chess. Okay. And it's like figuring out 
what you love to do, how you do it, how you charge for it, are you charging, you know, properly for it, and are you watching your operational expenses on doing it so that you make it worthwhile. This is the planning that you do because this is how you create the business that you love showing up for every day that you want to come to. Okay. So, all right, because once we have all this information, we have all the projects, we have all the things that we have to do to build it out, we have all the revenue and all the projected revenue, then we're going to plan out our year and apportion our time according to priority, okay? Because we always consider what becomes a priority, again, like I keep saying, by what we, it will earn us, but by also the enjoyment we get from doing it, what, what lights us up, okay? So I know by the time that I meet with Kat again, she will have this list flushed out and finished, and then we will take it apart, debate the merits of every little thing thing on it, add more to do items for each little thing on it. But we will leave with a plan for where her time will be spent next year. Okay. So go through your offerings. All right. What is it that you do? What are you, what do you like doing? Where does the money come from? The other thing I want you to do as you do this review is Next week, we're going to talk about a marketing review. So when you're doing your revenue generating review, capture that info too, right? Because it'll make it easier next week. So for example, you might list your services, okay? So you're going to list the type of service or product that you currently have. You're going to list your gross earnings for each one. Bonus points if you can list the net earnings too, yay. And then I want you to list where that type of sale comes from. So for example, say when you go to make your list, you look and you say, oh, I had 10 luxury full service clients last year. So that's, that's a column, right? And then you're going to list your gross design fees for those 10 projects. You're going to list your gross product fees. Okay. Um, product sales, I should say you should be able to list your net earnings from those product sales. Okay. And then I want you to say, where did those 10 clients come from? So three came from three, uh, from previous client referrals, two came from Instagram, three came from professional referrals, and two came from regional press spreads that you had, something like that. Okay. Because then with this list, you're going to figure out how you would grow this part of the business, this one vertical in your business. What would you have to do? What steps would you take? What investment would you need to make? And then you're going to pro project out the revenue versus the investment of time and money in order to grow that. So your number one and two money generators, hopefully are also your one and two happiness places too, you know, your happy places too. So if that's the case, we want to do more of those. So we're going to figure out how we can be more profitable in those areas, what we can do to grow those businesses, the areas of those business of that, what we can do to grow the business in those areas and what it will cost us in time and money and what we can project to make from it next year. And then we put the plan to paper. Then we actually, if you have to, you know, place three ads in regional magazines, you're going to, one week you're going to have on the calendar to contact those magazines, get the spec sheets and the ad rates for them and make a decision on what you're going to spend on it. Um, if you've got to get on, um, you know, I don't know if you, if, if it's a product or a service, like maybe there's interior design uh, podcasts out there, like that are facing the consumer, right. That are like talking about how to design. So maybe you're, I'm going to get on design podcasts, whatever it is, but figure it out. And then you're going to place that time in your calendar. All right. So, um, does this make sense? <laughs> I hope it does because what if you found out that your biggest lead rev generator and your be biggest revenue generator wasn't something like designer for a day and you didn't know it and you love doing it, right? Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be fun? Instead of like you've been thinking all along, oh, I feel guilty for doing this. I should be doing full service design. You know, that's where it's out, blah, blah, blah. What if you found out that's where all your money was and you could just, what, instead of doing 12 a year, what if you did three a week? And I'm using that because it's an easy example, not because I'm an advocate for it or anything like that. It's just, it's just an example. Um, it's the same thing if you've found out that the luxury full service was really where 
uh, your heart was and where the profit center was. So then it becomes, well, why are you distracting yourself with, you know, maybe designing a hardware line or a lighting line or chasing down opportunities for to be on panel discussions or something because when's the last time a panel discussion got you a luxury client <laughs> like I, I mean really right so that's the thing it's figuring out what you do well what you make money on and what you like doing and being intentional about where the ones that you've done previously came from and where you're going to get the next ones next year. Okay. It's, um, it's, it sometimes can be an eye opening experience and it sometimes can have a come to Jesus moment attached to it with you. <laughs> you have to find out that you have to let go of something, um, or that you should let go of something. And I've been there, done that. And, um, but I have to say every time I have made a decision to let go of something that I thought, oh my goodness, I couldn't, I could not do that. I could not. It all of a sudden another door opens. It's just like, boom. And, and it happens every time. As soon as you take your mind from trying to fit the square peg into the round hole, because that's what it is when you keep trying to make something work that's not working, even though it's not this big, hard, horrible thing. It's just this like little nudgy thing that you keep trying to get off the ground and it doesn't go. And then when you really pick it apart and you figure out that there's no way to make money on it or there's no way I'm going to be happy doing it or whatever it is, and you just say, that's it, uncle, I, it's over. It's crazy to me how it's a, it's a, it almost now sometimes doesn't even take an hour for something to happen. And I say, whoa, <laughs> there's an opportunity that I never would have paid attention to if I didn't know I just cleared the decks of time and money from this other thing that I was banging my head against the wall on. All right. So that's why I like you to do it. I like it because it creates a clarity in what's going well, but it really often creates the clarity on the things that we didn't want to see you know, that we wanted to just keep doing because we like doing them or we thought we should be doing them or I don't know, some book somewhere told us to do it. <laughs> some crazy thing. So I am, I hope this was helpful. Uh, take a few minutes, do your own investigation, do your own list, do your own, uh, you know, reports and stuff and uh, take a look at it and see what you learn. I'd love for you to share with me what you learned. Share it in the Luann Nigara and Friends Facebook group. It'd be fun to see it there, what you're doing. Um, also on this post on Instagram, happy to have a conversation there with, with you about it. And uh, that's it. I want to thank you, Kat, for allowing me to use your business as my guinea pig today. Um, and for all of you, for more about Kat and her Eleanor collection, her design for builders kit, her antique shop and her classes at Luann University, just go to the show notes for all the links. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, if you're listening real time, I'm wishing you a happy Thanksgiving 2021. I hope that, um, you have a nice, peaceful, restful Thanksgiving with the people that you love. Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one -on -one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.